Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is Stanley Measuring Tape, inventor of the Stanley Measuring Tape. Two weeks ago, we came into this house to do our basic thing, where we find somebody who needs some help. They can't afford to hire somebody to do it. They either have mental illness or depression or severe ADHD, and they have a lot of trouble just cleaning up their home and making it functional. So we come into those homes for free and do all that stuff for them. I'm autistic and I like to do stuff like that, so it's kind of a win-win-win win-win situation where I get to do my hobby. They get a clean house for free. I get to make a cool video and you guys get to watch me do my thing. So when we were doing that a couple weeks ago, we realized that it was not just a case of cleaning up and repositioning their furniture, which really did help a lot. They needed more than that. The place was pretty worn down. This is a hand-me-down house from a relative. And this couple not only was going through depression and they also do have some ADHD and some autism in the family, but they'd always lived in rentals, so they don't know how to take care of this stuff and how to fix small things when they're broken. So I started fixing some minor stuff, and then we got them things like curtains and some thrift shop furniture that was cheap but looked good. Then we ended up fixing three major sink problems, everything from leaks to clogs to bad flow problems. We gap filled a giant hole that was in one of their walls so that it can be prepared to be patched. And eventually that video went viral. As of this recording, we're over a million views on it. That's important because that means we get more revenue from that video so we can take some of that money and put it back into this house. The original video was how to make your house look fancy even if you're broke. But now that that video is doing well, we decided to just buy a whole bunch of paint. We ended up painting their kitchen in the very last video. We got them a ton of curtains and rugs and decorations. We bought them a new bedspread and bed set which you'll see in this video. And then we ended up fixing some more things and that's that's where we're at on this video right now. We're now going to transform their living room and bedroom with a whole bunch of paint and decorations and brand new stuff. But first we have to start out by getting rid of the nail holes. Whenever you put nails or screws into a wall, it makes a little crater like lip around the hole. So Jason is scraping all those off and then filling the holes in with filler. After that dries, we sand all those and then I had to sand the entrance door and the bedroom door because those were originally painted with oil-based paint and the paint that we are going to be putting on here doesn't stick to oil-based paint. So what you do is you sand those and scuff them up, then put primer on it, a couple coats actually, and then you can paint over the top of it. Don't touch it for like two days and it'll harden up just fine. That's what she said. She actually didn't say that.
Now, in doing this, we ended up doing some things that we don't normally do if we paint. Like if I was painting my house, I'd never do this stuff. That would be painting the window frames because they're metal and painting over outlet covers. The reason we're doing it is because the last people who painted in here got paint all over those things. They had painted over the outlet covers and we don't have a place in town that even sells those. So we just painted over the tops of them until they can be replaced. The windows had overlapped paint or the window frame had overlap paint from the last time somebody painted. So I decided to paint those just to make them look like way more tidy. I'm going to reiterate what I talked about in the kitchen painting video. I took the lady of the house to Menards and told her to pick out her colors, not what she thought was in style, not what she thought her friends would like, not what she thought people would expect her to do, and not to just try to follow some fad that she saw on HGTV. I wanted her colors in her house. Those colors are not going to be for everyone because she likes bright colors and she likes bold. The reason I say that is because in every one of these transformational videos, no matter what channel it's on, it always gets flooded with comments that are like, I don't like that color at all. What I would have done is, and the truth is what you would have done is nothing because it's not your house. These colors are perfect because they're her colors. That being said, she picked out a bright ass orange and we decided to two tone it so it calmed it down with a very light pink pale orange. Jason referred to them as pumpkin and Caucasian. And in real life, that's exactly what it looks like. My camera makes them look brighter than they actually are. But in real life, they're the exact color of a pumpkin and Caucasian. So part of the challenge in doing this is taking colors that I wouldn't normally use in my house and making them work in someone else's. So if you have a super bold color, you don't want to paint the whole room in that color. You want to tone it down with a secondary color to break it up. You also have to keep in mind that you're going to have have decorations on the wall that will also help break that up. So what I did to add some flair to the room and break up the paler color, because again, that's going to be on three walls, that definitely needs broken up too, is I decided to paint the trim in bright orange and paint the wall in the light orange and then reverse that on the dark accent wall. You'll see what I mean here in just a minute, but they will kind of positive negative each other. Then I picked out some points of interest or some highlight areas like a couple of shelves that were at one point just plain wood, un untreated, unstained, and I primed those and painted those dark orange in order to interrupt the lighter orange that'll be behind the TV. Again, you'll see all this just in a minute and it'll make sense. That adds a lot of time to painting. It like doubles or triples the painting time because you have to be super careful when painting trim. However, the end result is definitely worth the effort. And like I tell Jason all the time, if you have a choice between taking the easy route or the hard route on a paint job, the harder route will always look better, at least in my experience. Maybe not the harder route, but the unnecessary route. It's not necessary that we do two-tone in this room, but by doing the unnecessary thing. We gave the room a whole lot of character and made those two colors work without it being gaudy. For the bedroom, we'll end up using the same colors that we used in the kitchen, but we'll use them in a different way. We'll paint two walls pine green and we'll paint the other two walls the lighter green. So that if, if you're looking across the room in one direction, you see one color. If you look across it at another direction, you'll see a different color. We'll get to all that here in just a bit though. So just settle down, settle down. Everything in here got two coats, including the ceilings. We painted both ceilings. Well, three if you count the kitchen. And I'll tell you that of all the things we painted, the ceilings were my favorite because it instantly lightens up a room. This, These ceilings had not been painted in decades, at least the bedroom one. And the difference between what they were and what they became is incredible. It made the whole lighting of the room change because it, it went from like a brown or a gray to a very bright white and now it can reflect light. And it instantly lifted the moods of all these rooms. It made it look brand new and clean. You'll notice I'm not using painter's tape and that's for three reasons. One, I'm awesome. Two, that's how I roll sun. And three, I'm using a method that doesn't require it. So if I get paint on a wall, since I'm doing two-tone, if I get it overlapped into an area that it's not supposed to be, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be painting the area where that overlapped occurred. So I can be a little sloppy whenever I'm putting on the very first color and then I have to be more precise when I'm putting on the second shade. So sometimes if I'm painting around something that's tricky, I'll purposely just slop it on there and let it overlap just to save time knowing that I'll be able to fix that overlap whenever I get into a different color.
some of the fixes that we made on this place this time around. Their door had a gigantic gap in it and it was just letting in air like crazy. So we bought some cheap weather stripping and I put one on the door itself. Then I had Jason go over about an inch and put some on the door frame so that it's double, double weather strip. That instantly changed the airflow in that house. They didn't have cold air coming through the door. That's going to save them money on their heating and cooling bills and it's going to get rid of any draftiness that was in the living room. The other major thing I did was gap fill the hole in one of their walls so that it can at least have insulation in there and the hole will be filled until it can get properly patched. You'll notice in the very first video in this series there was a huge sheet hanging out of the wall. Lots of people asked about it because I forgot to explain it. That sheet had just been stuffed in there because the hole was letting in tons of air and then the cats would try to get into the walls so they just stuffed a sheet in there to block it all off. That is no longer a thing. When you're renting and you run into these problems you just report it to the landlord and hopefully they're not a scumbag and they actually come over and fix your stuff but when you don't have a landlord especially if you're not used to that you'll get a small problem in the house like let's say a leak underneath your sink and your first reaction is going to be panic because you're thinking great I don't have $300 to pay a plumber to come in here and fix my sink so I'll do something simple like put a bucket underneath it and then just change the bucket out and figure it out later what I told them is that when you go into house ownership you're responsible for all that and in those cases YouTube is your friend you find out what's wrong with your thing your sink whatever you go on YouTube and put in your symptoms you know leaky sink at the faucet drainage problem in sink whatever you watch a few videos until you find one that is similar to the one that you're trying to fix and then you just learn it what you'll find out is that a lot of those fixes instead of paying a plumber $300 to do it for you typically cost about five bucks and and five to ten minutes worth of time and that's exactly what we found in this house a whole lot of fixes that took just a couple dollars and a few minutes and that kind of blew their minds because they'd never really thought of that before so for instance the door problem that was like two dollars and fifty cents worth of weather stripping and it took about 45 seconds to put up I spent seven dollars on gap filler and then just sawed off the excess that took about half a minute they had a herd of moose in their living room just walking around being moose and I just bought some carrots for like a buck 80 and threw them out in the yard and all the moose went out there to eat the carrots and now their house is moose free. Now to give you guys an example of how much you've helped this couple just by watching the videos and hitting the subscribe button, we were not only able to buy $900 worth of paint and curtains and home repair stuff, we also got them bedspread that I'd mentioned before. It's a bedspread kit with a bed skirt and pillow shams and throw pillows. But when we were taking apart their bed to move it out of the bedroom so we could paint, I noticed that not only was the mattress completely 
trashed, but the box springs were broken in a couple different places. We were able to go up to a thrift store here in town that sells brand new non-used beds, and we were able to buy them a brand new queen size bed. That could not have happened without you guys watching the videos and subscribing. I find that miraculous in a way because everybody's benefiting from this and you guys didn't have to pay anything in order to make it happen. I mean, the members did, but the members are a special kind of awesome weird. Oh, by the way, I've got a membership section, so suck it. A lot of you asked me to film reactions from the homeowners whenever I do things like this. I don't do that because I like to keep the uh, people anonymous. They allowed us into their house and are letting us do what we do, even though they're embarrassed and they don't really want people from the outside coming in and seeing the way they were living. I get that. I'm definitely not going to show them on camera, especially since the first video got over a million views. I don't want a million people to see them on camera. However, I will tell you that I've never seen someone more appreciative, even after just the regular cleaning before we even painted. But once we started painting and we started getting all the extra furniture and decorations, we were able to buy her a uh, makeup desk that was really nice. I got several hugs. I'm not even joking. I got like a hundred thank yous. And again, I've never seen somebody so appreciative and so happy about the changes that were made. She said it for the first time that they've been in that house, it feels like a home, like her home. And that makes me pretty happy. When all was said and done, we ended up getting them about $2,500 worth of new stuff and fixes. So again, from the bottom of my heart, sincerely, thank you. Thank you straight to hell. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not, I won't thank you to hell. That's a weird way to thank somebody. It's, it's like way too aggressive for a thanks. Or maybe that's what I should say. I aggressively thank you right in the face. I'm going to double the speed for the second coats because you've already seen me put these on and second coats are boring. It just looks a lot cleaner and deeper. That orange was so bright and so dark that that could have genuinely used one more coat. We didn't because it still looked really good and we didn't have enough time to do another coat with all the trim and stuff, but they do have leftover paint. So if they ever want to add another coat or paint other stuff in their house, they've got a whole bunch left over. Once the paint was dry in the living room, all we had to do was just put things back where they go and start doing a little bit of decoration, but I wanted those walls to dry for at least 24 hours before we hung up pictures because that can get a little dangerous. Even though the paint may feel dry, it's not fully, it's not fully cured. And so if you hang pictures over it too soon, they'll fuse to the wall.
Once we got done with that, I sent Jason into the bedroom with the instructions of if it can disappear, make it disappear. He needed to sweep out all the cobwebs because there were a bunch, get rid of as much clutter as he could, move as much stuff out of the bedroom as he could. And then once he hit kind of a hurdle, then I would come in and help him clear out the rest. Then pull all the stuff off the walls and start over from scratch the same way we did in the living room. Just using a paint scraper to get off the little crater holes that are caused by nails or screws putting filler in all those, letting it dry, sanding it, wiping it down. Then we can jump straight into trimming and painting. One big problem with this room is they had way too much stuff in it, way too much furniture, and there's there's very little area in this bedroom. So we got rid of about half of the furniture. They also kind of jumped the gun and put together the makeup desk and then put all the bedspread stuff on the, the beds. So you're kind of getting a spoiler preview of those. But the makeup desk was really cool because it had a light in it that you can change change depending on where you're going to be. So in other words, if you're going to be inside, you can change the makeup light to indoors and it'll show you what you look like with indoor lighting. Or if you're going to be out in the sun, you can tell the makeup desk to give you sunlight and you can see what you're going to look like when you're in the sunlight. It's got a whole bunch of modes and settings like that on it. But yeah, once we got everything out, then we can kind of reevaluate the room and say, okay, here's where the new bed's going to go. Now we'll build the rest of the room around that. That will dictate where we put the dresser and her makeup desk. And she's got a little small black desk that she's going to use for her computer. And then that in turn will dictate where we put pictures and wall decorations. That's one of my small tips that some people don't think about. Always decorate your walls in accordance with your furniture. Put your furniture where you want it to go, then hang up your wall decorations to complement those and to make it symmetrical with your furniture. Now we're taking everything out of the room for two reasons. One is to give us room to paint, obviously. But two, whenever you're redoing a room like this, it's best to move everything out so that you can vacuum the floors really well and then rebuild the room as if you're moving into it for the first time. I call it my move out, move in method. If you're redecorating a room and the room is blank, it's much easier to put things in one at a time and build the room about around a focal point. So for instance, after we're done painting, I can put the bed where we want it to go. Then we can figure out where the dresser can go in relation to that without blocking off room. So you've got room to walk through it without dodging thing. And using that method, I'll put furniture in according to their importance. So bed first, then dressers, then makeup desk and computer desk, then moose alarm. That's, that's the alarm you use in case moose break into your house. You need that by your bed, but it doesn't have to be an eyesore. Then after all that, we can put up the painting and artwork and posters or whatever. But that way it lets you know that your bed is here. Therefore, you can take your biggest piece of artwork and put it dead center above your bed and everything will look symmetrical.
You'll notice at some point we switch from me painting this room to Jason painting this room, and I'm going to explain why, but it's only going to mean something to those of you who regularly watch the channel. My wife has been going through some medical problems, some pretty major ones, and it's going to require surgery. We know what's going on. Please don't be like an internet doctor and try to diagnose her. We already know what's going on. One of her problems is that she is producing way, way, way too much calcium for somebody her age, and that morning, by sheer coincidence, she happened to have a random blood test that they wanted her to do. So she went and did her thing. I went and did mine. A few hours later, her doctor called her and said, drop what you're doing and get to the ER right now. She said, I'm calling ahead and letting them know what to do. But in case there's any confusion, I want them to give you fluids and write down this medication to put you on right away. So Emily called me, let me know that. I drove back home, got her and took her to the emergency room. We were there for about five hours or so, it turns out that her calcium level was at 13.6 and at 14, you can slip into a coma or cardiac arrest. Had she not gotten that blood test that morning, we would have never known because other than just falling over unconscious or dead, there are no other symptoms or at least no symptoms that would seem out of the ordinary for her. She would have just been watching TV and then fallen unconscious. They kept her overnight. She's doing just fine. They've got her on medication. Her calcium level came back down, but it was a pretty significant scare that was totally legitimate. So I just texted Jason and said, finish off that room. I know you're not used to painting, but here's what I want you to do. And I think he did a pretty good job. For somebody who's never really painted before, I thought he did a pretty good job on the room. Though it would have been funny if I'd have came back the next day and told him it sucked and I handed him a paint scraper. and <laughs> been like, here, scrape it all off and start again. But yeah, the next day I was able to take her home and then uh, get her settled. I came back to this house. We started over again and just finished off the room, started decorating, which is my favorite part. And then we could dive into the ceilings. The ceilings, like I said earlier in the video, they're my favorite part of this whole painting because I think the most noticeable difference you can make when painting a room is painting the ceiling. Obviously, you're going to notice the walls because they're a different color and they look a lot cleaner. But the ceilings, even though you may not directly look at them and notice they've been painted, the way they reflect light is so dramatically different that it changes the entire mood of a room. And you can feel it when you walk into these rooms after we wrapped everything up. The bedroom ceiling was so bad that it had to be primed first and we used Kills 2. That is a, like an adhering primer and it's designed to cover up stains. So once we were able to prime that just one time, then the ceiling paint can go on and it sticks to that better than it would stick to just a regular ceiling, a regular unprimed ceiling. But to get that completely done and get all the stains totally covered, we used one coat of Kills and then two coats of ceiling paint and it looked 
looked brand freaking new. I don't know why I threw in freaking there. I, that was way more aggressive than it needed to be. It looked brand new. It looked brand normally new. The living room was even easier because somebody had attempted to paint that ceiling before within the last couple of years and it wasn't really dirty. So all I had to do was just straight trim and paint that with no primer or anything. In fact, it, it looked so good. We only needed one coat of ceiling paint given I bought high end ceiling paint. Normally that's only like 15 or 20 bucks a gallon for regular ceiling paint. But the stuff I got was like $45 a gallon and it's specifically made to be thicker. It's almost the consistency of wall paint. But yeah, once we were done with that, well, all we had to do was just kind of hang out and let it dry and visit and BS and just be friends, which was great. Then by that point, the walls had sat for 24 hours because all this was done over multiple days. So we could start hanging up new mirrors that we got them, new clocks, new artwork, new decorations, new curtains. We got them new rugs. There was all kinds of stuff we bought for this house. I mean, you'll see it. You'll see the before and after pictures. But the difference between what it was and what it became is so dramatic it's almost shocking. We do have even more plans for this house, especially if these videos keep doing as well as they're doing. I want to gut the kitchen. They need drywall in place of all the old crumbly cheap material that's on their walls right now. They need new trim work all around the house. Even though the cabinets in the kitchen look way better than they did, they're all water damaged. They're all old and kind of rotten. Their floors need replaced. That carpet is older than half the people watching this video. It all needs ripped up and vinyl plank flooring put in, kind of like that faux wood stuff. Their ceiling fans need to go and either replace them with new ones or even better, just lights. They don't actually have a problem with airflow in that house so they don't really need ceiling fans. All of the windows and doors in the whole house need replaced. Both of their bathrooms are just utterly destroyed. Th those definitely need gutted and just completely remodeled. The house just needs a ton of work. Like every room needs work. Fortunately, all the work they need is totally doable. It doesn't need like a hundred thousand dollar remodel. This is not an HGTV thing where you're like, our budget for our kitchen is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's like, what? Get the hell out of here. This whole house in my area doesn't cost a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But anyway, that we're gonna do what we can. And as long as people keep watching these videos, it means that the cash flow that comes through the channel goes directly right into their house. Then when that's done, we're going to find the next person who needs help and we're just going to continue this process because, hey, if it works, then we're going to take advantage of it every time. Every time, Earl. Earl, while we're watching me do this stuff, I did go ahead and open up my Facebook to the public. There were so many Facebook pages that were stealing my content that I, have, I now have a social media company that runs my Facebook stuff. So if you want to follow the actual real Facebook of Midwest Magic Cleaning, that's linked in the description 
description and also in the bio of the channel. It's actually kind of funny because I think I only had three or 4,000 people who followed that and the people who were stealing my content had like a quarter of a million. Fortunately for us, the social media company that I'm using, one of the things that they do is they put out copyright strikes against people who do that because they're not just using my material. They're not just stealing my stuff. They're making money off of it. And I can't say I'm a big fan of that. But one of the other things they're doing, which is even more frightening, is that they strike up conversations with people over DMs. They convince those people that they're me and then they start getting personal information out of them like phone numbers and addresses and real names. And then before you know it, somebody's getting scammed. But those channels got so big that I would say the majority of the people watching this video, if you follow me on Facebook, there's a high likelihood that you're not actually following me. You're probably following a, just a fake content thief. We didn't have a lot of room to work with in the bedroom, especially since we upgraded them from a full-size bed to a queen. I mean, a queen is not that much bigger than a full-size, but this room's not big to begin with. So we had to get a bit creative in how we put their furniture in there. There's a bathroom off to the side of that room, and you don't really want to put something along a wall that's in your walking path because then you have to dodge it. It interrupts the flow of the room, so we kept one wall blank. We put the bed in the middle, the dresser at the foot of the bed against the opposite wall. Then we just lined up the makeup desk and the small black computer desk, almost like a little yin yang sort of deal, so that when she switches from one to the other, all she has to do is roll her chair from one desk to the next. There's still plenty of room to walk in between those to get to bed. And even though it does look a little cramped, it's way, way less cramped than what it was when we started. Because in the end, we ended up taking out a bookshelf, an old TV stand that was way too big for that room and several small pieces of furniture that were just kind of step stool height. So instead of the TV stand, we put the TV on top of their dresser and now they can lay in bed and watch TV if they want. And it's not off to the side. It's directly down by their feet. So you don't have to lay in just one position to watch TV. You can move around however you want and you can still see it. And they better be watching this video on that TV. In fact, they better play nothing but Midwest Magic Cleaning because I've got something to say if they don't. I don't know when we'll be back to this house, but we are going back there. I know they've got two bathrooms that desperately need some work, but part of that is going to be replacing their bathtub because the one they have is just absolutely old and destroyed and nasty. There's no cleaning it. There's no saving it. It's just a, a matter of time to get more money in. I am taking this week off because I'm exhausted and overworked. I've been going over a hundred hours per week on this house and social media and all that stuff. I desperately have to have some me time to reset my brain. So that means if there is a video next weekend, it may be a collaboration. It may just be me cleaning my house, something that doesn't take a massive amount of effort, but it still has to be interesting. I'm not just going to throw slop up onto the channel and say, there you go, peasants. Enjoy my cleaning scraps, freaks. Anyway, if you haven't already liked my Facebook page, the real one is linked in the description. And if you haven't subscribed already, hey man, it's not my problem. If you want to be a devil worshiper and not subscribe, that's your deal. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life with your not subscribing, listening to Motley Crue self. Anyway, members, I will see you on Wednesday. Everyone else, we'll just have to see how this weekend goes.